Blog Talk Radio. Hello, this is Peter Joseph, and you're listening to V Radio. Good afternoon to everybody in the States, and good evening to those of you in other parts of the world, and good morning if you're all the way in Australia. <laughs> I still can't get over how weird the time zone is over there, but uh, um, welcome to this edition of V Radio. Uh, today my guest is Tyson Eberly. Or Everly, my apologies. I just talked to the guy about how to pronounce that, and I still messed it up. Um, to go through just a few quick announcements first, um, we have done a little bit of up, updating on uh, the issue of the Troll documentary, so feel free to go to v-radio.org or v-radio.org. On the front page, if you scroll down a little bit to the left, you will see a like box for the uh, Facebook group for the Troll documentary. Uh, that's where I'll be posting all of the updates uh, and little segments and such that will be going into the film. It's also a good place to go if you have any suggestions, uh, links, articles, things of that nature to be added to that upcoming documentary film. Um, in addition to that, uh, I've also updated my link section with a lot of other great stuff, including websites that you guys have You've heard me mention before, you can easily find them now in the in the link section of the website. Um, in addition to that, uh, good news was that uh, due to some financial thrifty spending on my part, I was able to shut down the donation widget early this month and put up the next month's widget. So thank you, everybody, to who supported us. As I had told you guys in the beginning, I won't be accepting any donations beyond what I need. Uh that all being said, uh, thank you for coming on today, Tyson. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. No, oh, thank you so much, Neil. It's great to be with you. I've been a fan of the show, and uh, you do great work. You're a wonderful representative for the movement, and uh, no, it's really a pleasure to be here. So, yes, my name is Tyson Austin Everly. I live in Austin, Texas, and for probably the last uh, six months now, we've been doing, a, I would say, the Austin chapter of the, the Zeitgeist movement has been doing a, a weekly live public access TV show called Zeitgeist Live, and in which we we it's really it was kind of strange at first like is this just going to be an educational program where we're constantly talking about the same things to anybody that you know that's watching, uh, but really what I was feeling more called to do is is for, to do more of a of an update show for movement members so it was to gear the television show toward Zeitgeist Movement members, um, and anybody that is watching would still be able to follow along and possibly get interested and uh, want to get involved. So, yeah, man, we uh, we do – one of the things that we really like to do is we do – because it's at, a, it's at our public access TV studios, it's almost like it's a small example of a resource, not a resource-based economy, but, you know, utilizing our local resources to the best of their ability instead of – you know, owning a, a television studio and having to manage all the equipment and whatnot, you know, that we use what the city has to offer, which is really, which is really, you know, some high-quality equipment that we get to use. And so we do a lot of, like, Skype interviews with people over in London and, like, Rishi over in Mumbai and Australia and all over the world. We haven't, we haven't had any Asia interviews yet, but uh, we do a little, you know, Skype interviews, and it's, it's a good little TV show, man. It really is. We have a transforming technology segment, you know, on last night's show, or excuse me, Wednesday night's show. We had uh, we had some local guys in called Broken Sidewalk Farms, and uh, they they are also in alignment with the resource based economy. But they're working to do more kind of temporal solutions by, you know, beginning uh, you know low fi vertical farming, um, aquaponics, uh, you know. Even like potato boxes, and uh, but they really want to use these little uh, microchip widgets to where you know everything. He couldn't, he didn't. I don't quite understand it, but you know, to where widgets are used to you know control the water temperature and the and the watering of uh, indoor gardens or hydroponic gardening and whatnot. So yeah, man, it's a it's a fun show. We have uh, we have a lot of fun with it. We've got a crew of five people, sometimes six. And, uh, you know, it was really just kind of the uh, best way for me to think uh, of how we could, instead of just having a weekly meeting or a meetup, how we could get more bang for, not for our buck, but just we could be more, 
you know, we could reach more people this way. It would be a little more everlasting. And we could, you know, reach people that are locally here in Austin that are checking the shows out. And then, of course, the archives and hopefully inspire people uh, as well within the movement. Now, Doug Millette was actually able to come out and visit you guys directly and be on the show a couple times, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. <clears throat> Doug was watching one of the archives, or maybe he was watching a live show, I don't know. And we had a, a free market libertarian uh, call into the show. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so. Sorry, and, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And, you know, I and I really, you know, I, I was once in that, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. I do. You, anyways, I had a lot. I have a lot of respect. His name was John Bush, and I have a lot of respect for him. He really is not scared, and he really does genuinely care uh, for the people. And uh, so Doug expressed. He said, "Hey, you know, I would love to be able to uh, to be able to, to to answer those questions." And so we just lined it up. Doug came up from Houston, and we set aside time. You know, during the daytime, this wasn't a live show, so we could just. You know, let them go as long as they wanted. And for about an hour and a half, John Bush and uh, Doug Millett really hashed it out. You can find it on YouTube by typing in resource-based economy versus libertarianism to find the full hour and a half uh, debate, I guess you'd call it. But it was really civil. It was more like a discussion. And at the end, of course, to no surprise, John Bush <clears throat> said, wow, well, it's been really enlightening. Thanks a lot, guys. You know. <laughs> well, actually, I, I kind of broke a tradition here. Generally, when I bring on a new guest who's never been on V Radio before, I ask them this question: What was the precipice for you? What what brought you out of just normal, you know, mundane life and into activism? Was there any specific thing that happened? Was it? Just, it was. Go ahead. It was. There was absolutely a specific thing that happened. It really happened uh, one night. Um, it was really a, a kind of an overnight awakening that I had. And there was definitely some build-up to it, but uh, <clears throat> I have a background in dance. And uh, when I was uh, when I was getting into high school, I fell into the same mundane, you know, drink alcohol, chase girls, party lifestyle. And even though I had talent uh, and ability when I was, uh, you know, younger, I just kind of uh, forgot about it or something. And, uh, and then that lifestyle just kind of continued on. And then when I moved out to Los Angeles to really escape the lifestyle and the environment that I'd been in because I'd kind of gotten so toxic and ill and sick, I developed uh, an illness called Epstein Barr. And <clears throat> so when I was in LA for the, I decided that I would clean up and I just got sober and, uh, and I started taking care of myself and I started dancing. I started getting involved with uh, my things that I really was passionate about from when I was a child. And, and about two years later, I, uh, I was frustrated with um, not being able to find work with my art, and uh, and one night I just sat down and I and I thought to myself, well, you know, why is this? Why is why are other art forms in dance more popular, like hip hop, and not my art form, which is popping, which is a street style of dance similar to break dancing? Mm -hmm. And um, I said, well, let me just sit down and figure it out. And I'll be honest with you, Neil, I had I had smoked a little marijuana. It had been you know a few years, and. Uh, and I think this really helped in, I don't know, triggering some, activating some part of my mind. But I really just sat down and went into really deep contemplation, deep thought. And I I just backtracked in time. I followed each uh, of the dance history and was able to come up with some strong observations. And with that, I've, I've just became completely empowered to take action to... Uh, rectify the situation instead of sitting there complaining about it, I was going to do something about it because I had a bit of a blueprint. And then this blueprint and taking action on this just really radically changed my whole life. I I woke up. I really only started seeing uh, solutions to roadblocks and uh, it just became very positive, very connected, very present and, uh, and woke up to a whole aspect of life that I had never known about before. I really didn't know existed. Sure, I'd heard of different people, you know, having spiritual awakenings and were just very present, but I never really thought too much about it. 
And so once I was experiencing this type of experience of life, like I was dancing all the time, I was performing just like on the street, I, I, I did radical things. You know, I quit my job and I started street performing and whatnot. But really what I wanted to know was why was I asleep for so long? Um, and um, what is responsible for the sleepiness? And so I just got very curious about, you know, life in general and started researching and asking questions and, and looking for answers and researching. And then, sure enough, I attracted Zeitgeist. Uh, my awakening happened on January 14, 2005. And then, you know, I think in June of 2007, uh, Zeitgeist came out. And um, and so Zeitgeist is all I could talk about. I talked about Zeitgeist to everybody I came in contact with. And uh, and then I uh, I moved back to Austin, Texas, and started my own television show called Tyson TV, and where I showed Zeitgeist on the local public access television in three different segments. <clears throat> and the way I would get people's attention is I would use my dancing as almost bait to bait them to get them to <laughs> check me out and listen to me. So I would do a little dance performance, and then I would teach a little dance lesson. I'd be like, "Now guess what? Watch this or check this out." You know, and uh, then I flew to uh, I flew to L.A. for the premiere of, Eden of uh, Zeitgeist Addendum, and which that really you know Addendum just kind of uh, for the second time blew my mind, and all I could talk about uh, on the television show was you know the Venus Project and you know these this new education that I was receiving this new information, and so I've, whereas Tyson TV was more of kind of like a variety type show. I realized I couldn't just uh, continue on doing Zeitgeist material on Tyson TV, so uh, this is how it kind of evolved to Zeitgeist Live. Okay, well, yeah, that's that's great, actually. Um, now, uh, for those of you who are interested in checking it out, I do have the Zeitgeist Live YouTube channel linked in my link section on the website for, for ease of checking it out. Now, if somebody living in Texas wants to watch your show, what time is it on and what channel? Well, it's only available on television for those that live in Austin. Okay. And uh, and so, you know, I mean, if you live in Austin, it's on Channel 16 every Wednesday night from 10 to 11 o'clock. And then we archive it on our website, which is zeitgeistlive.tv, as well as our YouTube page. And uh, it's also streamed. But, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> the streaming is from the Channel Austin uh, website, which is channelaustin.org, channel 16. Uh, you know, you just go to channelaustin.org and then go to streaming and channel 16. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't work that well with all <clears throat> operating systems and uh, internet browsers. I understand Internet Explorer is the only thing that will really work well on. So that's unfortunate. We've tried uh, to get it up on uh, other forms. I've purchased some hardware. But uh, still haven't had any luck yet, so I'm still working that out, man. You ought to consider getting a Justin TV channel for it, then. Well, that's the thing. Like, I have a Justin TV channel, um, even done new stream or not. But to, it might just be something where we can't do it from the television studio, but it needs to be done from uh, somebody's home or something like that, because we keep trying to do it from the switch, from the you know, the engineering room. And it's just it's not working out. So hmm. yeah, maybe it's something that somebody at, at home needs to be able to do for us, you know, or, or something like that. Right. Well, so, yeah, just somebody who it happens to be working for might be able to to slave it and then you know put it on their own like Justin TV channel for you. Well, um, not yeah, not, not, yeah, whatever. Not so much that, but yeah, what we need is a Justin TV channel. Basically, that's what it is. The show is not as popular within the movement right now. I mean, not as many people know about it. And I think largely it has to do with because we haven't got basically a Justin TV channel worked out yet to where it's easily embedded, easily shared, and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons I was bringing you on here was to tell more people about your efforts. Um, awesome, man. Yeah, that's basically the plan. Now, uh, what kind of stuff do you have in mind for the future? Uh, what are your upcoming shows going to be about? Well, what I what I feel much better about doing now is, you know, when a you know the the I don't know if we're still calling it a split, but um, you know I was uh, I was resistant 
to reaching out to a lot of my community members here in Austin uh, who are working on different sustainability projects but haven't embraced the idea of a resource-based economy yet, you know, haven't, haven't embraced, embraced, you know, high-tech solutions that are working more for, like, low-tech solutions and whatnot. And now, though, I'm starting to, to see that that's not really going to get me very far uh, as far as, you know, really sharing the ideas of a high-tech version about, like, well, if you don't understand this, then I'm not even going to, like, give you my time. And so I'm, I'm changing that. Ever since the splits happened, I'm definitely changing that. And so I'm reaching out now to more people who, like, Habitat for Humanity and things, you know, because I have a lot of friends within my community here who are, you know, green builders and, uh, you know, they build, like, earth ships and things like that. And so some, on some upcoming shows, I'm going to have more uh, local uh, lo-fi um, sustainability projects that people can start incorporating themselves, such as different permaculture techniques, uh, you know, small, uh, you know, kind of lo-fi, wind power generators to get some electricity, um, different things like that. What we're also going to do is I don't think we're going to be doing a live show this summer. We're going to do a pre-recorded show because sometimes it's frustrating wanting to get, wanting to have guests on the show, but it's late their time. And, you know, like I wanted to have Jacques and Roxanne on, but, you know, at 11 at midnight, that's just too late for them. Right, right. So, so we're going to start doing the show, pre-recording the shows like around, you know, in the afternoon. That way we can have more guests on that live in London because it's always four in the morning in London. And London's such a great city right now. They're doing such great activism. Such great work is coming out of London. Um, so that's some of the things that we can expect in the future. I'm also going to be creating, uh, doing a more creative uh no, so I have this background. I'm really a, a talented street dancer, but how do you incorporate street dancing into activism? It's just kind of odd. I don't really know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So the best thing that I've been able to come up with is utilizing the artwork or the you know the uh, the graphic design work that gets posted up on the Zeitgeist Media Project or portal, and just using you know some different images and graphic designs that people use, and creating a bit of a music video that plays behind me on the green screen as I'm dancing. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. And so what I want to do is uh, is create, uh, I don't know, some, I don't know, just better, you know, music videos that I that I dance to, to, you know, kind of promote the movement. Uh, yeah. You know, I guess that's a, something that people can expect in the future. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so... I guess uh, basically, you know, you said you've been doing this for like six months. Um, and obviously, to those of you guys who have, you can't catch the show live, you can always go and watch it on YouTube, obviously. Um, yeah. And um, I guess uh, any experiences as far as like, you know, callers or anything, you know, any feedback or anything, you'd, you'd, mm-hmm. stories you'd like to share? Yeah, man. Uh, it's. Really, I would say uh, I find that the people that watch the show are people that are already geared toward activism. You know, public access television does have a reputation for, like, you know, as far as Austin, Texas is concerned, Alex Jones got his career started on Austin Public Access. Mm -hmm. And he still does have a show on Austin Public Access. And so there are a lot of patriot-minded folks in Austin and uh, so the people that watch this show are generally are those people, are the patriot-minded folks. Um, so the calls that we have are 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 generally callers who, um, you know, I'll make a comment like, uh, you know, say, you know, freedom is solely dependent on your purchasing power or something like that. <laughs> you're only as free as, you know, your purchasing power allows you to be. And so, you know, we'll get a lot of phone calls on people that would like to argue that, and uh, which is always fun. You know, it's great. It, sometimes it sucks that we have a time limit and we got to like, uh, okay, show's over, you're gone. But um, I don't know, man. Uh, really what's been the most cool thing for me, I suppose, is being able to do live Skype interviews with people that are on the other side of the world. You know, we'll do a little Google Earth thing going from the TV studio to, you know, uh, 
whatever they are in the world, going across the ocean, and then, okay, hey, now here we are here, and we're having this great conversation with somebody who's clearly not American. <laughs> and, right. Uh, so, you know, I know that that's, uh, as far as public access television goes, we're the only ones that ha- are doing that and have ever done that. So as far as the team goes, you know, I've got a great team. You know, Ryan Bain, he has a degree in radio, television, film. And he, you know, I met him through the just the Austin, you know, movement meetups. And so, you know, it was almost serendipitous that uh, everybody that kind of came on board already had skill sets geared toward producing good television. And uh, it's just a lot of fun, Neil. It's, it's, it's a great bonding experience for us all. Uh, we're about to really step it up a really big notch, to be honest with you, because during our interview with the Toronto chapter, uh, we learned that they're broadcasting from their house, which is a giant house that the chapter, that five of them had got together, and they called it Zeit House. <laughs> and so this, this gave us a great idea to ourselves get into a giant house together. So we've just found a huge five-bedroom house. It's awesome. It's so great. And so the television show crew, so there's going to be there's going to be six of us in this house, two couples and uh, and two singles. And basically this is going to be a kind of a productivity or a production house where we are going to, you know, plan. We're going to have screenings. Uh, we're going to uh, do, do community outreach and uh, almost like going door to door in our neighbors and getting to know our neighbors. Uh, introducing ourselves, offering, you know, offering our service up. Hey, do you guys need any help with anything right now? Uh, we're going to be growing food. Uh, we're going to incorporate some hydroponics. We are obviously going to be creating better television because we're all going to be together. The Texas State Chapter Coordinator, Jordan Berlingeri, and his girlfriend, Danny, who she is very knowledgeable and can speak well on the tenets of the movement, they're going to be moving up to Austin, joining us. So we're really consolidating and concentrating all of our efforts and uh, and creativity to really get productive as far as uh, our activism goes and our community outreach. We want to set up uh, tables, basically, like tabling, and start hitting the farmers markets in town, and start you know start start just you know you know getting to know our community because I believe people that go to farmers markets are already geared toward this direction of sustainability. And, you know, they 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 know enough to not, you know, to avoid, you know, the processed foods and whatnot. So they're out shopping, buying locally, buying organic, as well as getting to know our, our farmers. And, uh, and, of course, you know, we'll have a ton of material on us. So I'm really getting excited for the future. Yeah, actually, we just had an interesting comment from the chat room. The apparently the the Zeitunes intro with Tyson dancing was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I would bring you that shout out from uh, Zanaro, who's uh, from Zeitgeist, Louisiana. I've actually oh, had yeah. a past broadcast with him on it. Um, well, uh, I'm I'm really happy that you guys were able to do this, even on uh, public access. It's actually great, and I. I've looked at some of the episodes. I, I haven't been able to really sit through an entire episode yet, but yeah. um, you know the presentation of it is great. Um, and uh, overall, you know, I, I hope that maybe in the future, you know, that as far as guests are concerned, maybe I can try to help you guys get some of the big guests that I usually have on V Radio on your show. Um, that's, people, if you're interested, anyway. Very interested, Neil, and that's that's the thing about uh, you know. You know, right now, our guests have have been more focused on on members within the movement, and we kind of wanted to highlight just uh, not so much uh, the big people, but uh, more the smaller people that are you know just kind of in the trenches and you know uh, just I don't does that make sense you know No, I okay. understand. I've realized that I wasn't doing enough of that myself. That's one of the reasons I went back and started looking at some of the other, you know, people like the Zeitgeist Education Project and exactly. that nature. Right. I try to bring them into the forefront for sure. Right, right. Um, Philip is absolutely. Uh, I'm in touch with Philip to have him on the show. Yeah, but moving to a daytime slot, I also have a desire to have some big guests on. You know, like some authors, people that are not involved in the movement. You know, somebody like John Perkins or something like this. You know. So, right. to, so like some of the guests that you have, and um, 
So, yeah, absolutely. That would be fantastic, man. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Excellent. Well, um, I guess uh, basically that was you know, the main purpose of the show was just to kind of bring up what it is that you guys were doing and, uh, you know, yeah. break everybody up to speed. You know, everybody to be sure to check out what's going on over at Zeitgeist Live. Um, and yeah. uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I do. You know, I want to do a – I really wanted to just – for anybody that's listening – Using utilizing your public access television studios is a huge resource that I really think is really overlooked. And so for anybody that's listening, check your local city and, and see if there is such a, a resource that you have. Because what it is, you get access for a really nominal amount of money. It really doesn't cost much to uh, to be able to use the facilities of your public access studios. And what you can do is even if you're not going to do a live show, I mean, it's still it's still on the television box. And so one of the other things that we're doing is we're going to get several members of, uh, of our group to become producers so that we can start uploading all sorts of content, not just that guy's live, but Ryan Bain wants to do a show called Resource-Based Living TV or, or, or Venus TV, so, something, something like this, where it's going to be more of like a video show where he's, he basically is kind of just introducing different videos, video content that's being produced, you know, throughout the movement. And so just being able to get as much of this content, because we, the beautiful thing about this movement is everybody is kind of a contributor, and we're all sharing our, our content with each other. You know, it's all open source, essentially. And so you can this, – this is great, doing the television show, doing Zach Guys Live, because we're always able to pull from – really excellent content that's being produced from members all over the world. And so I just really highly encourage people to utilize the public access studios if, if they do have access to it. And, um, and you know, to, you know, I mean, I, I really like the Zeithouse idea. I know not everybody is in the same situation uh, that we're in, but uh, it is helpful to surround yourself with like minds. I, I pretty much, uh, I only try and do that. When I say only try and do that, I mean, that's not totally true, but I know what I want, and I want a global resource-based economy, and I really want to see a better world, and my values are, that's where I'm at. I, I don't like to go out and party or drink or, or, or really do much of that. I'm really, really passionate about this, and so I attract other passionate like minds to, to share this with. And uh, for anybody out there that's, you know, is, is, I don't know, more on the passive sidelines, you know, I really highly encourage you to just kind of, the way I got here, though, Neil, is by being an activist, I started burning, I probably passed out a thousand copies or, or more of Zeitgeist to Denim, and the first Zeitgeist film, that was before Denim came out, once the Denim came out, I, I started passing out less DVDs, but, you know, I bought a DVD tower burning machine, and uh, really just said, all right, anybody that I am I want to connect with and share time with is going to have to know what I'm about, what my intentions are, where my values lie. And the best way I know to do this is to get them to watch the Zeitgeist Addendum or something like that. And so um, I've now built up a, a good reputation in Austin for this. And, uh, and I don't have to constantly explain myself or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah, cool, man. I guess that's really all I would like to say. Hey, you guys, check out the show. It's a really unique show. Um, it's it's not polished. Uh, we're getting better, though. Uh, we really are getting better. And I'm proud of the show. And it's generally kind of a, uh, uh, you know, getting better planning ahead will help. But uh, the shows always turn out to be good. Uh, we did a, We had a really cool show not too long ago with the the members of the Ventura chapter, where we had about 11 of them on camera at once, uh, interviewing each one of them one at a time. And uh, and what came about was a uh, they are starting, they're going to do a, a Burning Man camp. They're going to do a Zeitgeist camp at Burning Man. And so we also are going to be joining them for that camp at Burning Man, because I've been to Burning Man, and there's a lot of open minds that go to Burning Man. Um and, you know, it's almost – they, they kind of artificially create abundance by bringing more than enough, and that's so everybody's sharing and gifting and whatnot. 
And so I think it'll be I think it'll be really easy to reach other people there that are out there at Burning Man just by using Burning Man itself as a bit of an example. Um, I mean, it's not you know obviously it's not you know a resource based economy example, but you know you can still pull from it, and uh, they're already you know geared towards sustainability and open mindedness. Uh, so I wanted to put that out there also for any listeners that uh, have ever thought about going to Burning Man. You can go to Burning Man this year and be with a bunch of like minds and, uh, you know, enjoy fellowship and, uh, and you know, get, some, get, some, get it done. Well, that's awesome, Tyson, and it's been great having you on today. Um, and if you guys ever have any big announcements or anything you want to do in the future, let us know. And then in the event, you know, that I need panelists, maybe it'd be good if you could come on an episode of V-Radio where we talk about one of the blogs or, or something along that line. I'm actually thinking about uh, doing an upcoming show on the topic of outsourcing and the uh, the destruction of the economy. Um, because I, I've been looking at that lately, and I'm generally what I'll do is I'll write a blog about it, we'll read from it, and then we'll discuss it. Uh, so um, maybe I'll bring you on again and obviously you can always re-mention that so go ahead and uh, give up the url to the website for zeitgeist live absolutely it's uh, zeitgeistlive.tv that's zeitgeistlive.tv and uh i also want to say neil i'm really looking forward to the troll documentary man and this is going to be much needed i think it'll go viral and uh, because trolls are now known <laughs> the, the internet web over and uh so also uh, i want to mention chad fisher comedy dot com. Chad has been doing our social commentaries. You know, he's greatly influenced by George Carlin and Bill Hicks. And uh Chad has been a major part of uh of Zeitgeist Live and uh, he's doing great work. He just released a uh he just created we we filmed a skit called uh Alex Jones Mad as Hell skit <laughs> where he he was inspired from the Alex Jones Peter Joseph radio show or radio interview and uh and it's it's a lot of fun. It's funny, and uh, you know, I think I think your listeners would appreciate it. So uh, yeah, man. So Live dot TV every Wednesdays from uh, ten to eleven, and uh, yeah, man. Thank How long you. after that do we? Does it usually take for you to guys to get those up on YouTube? It could take up to two weeks. Sometimes uh, less less than that. It, it's we're kind of dependent right now on equipment on um, being able to rent the equipment. Uh, to get the editing done, we don't actually have uh, the equipment. Ryan does does our editing work, and uh, he is without the uh, the equipment to get it done at his at a, on his own time. So we're a bit uh, dependent on the public access studios to check out, you know, uh, a machine that's capable of doing that for us. And sometimes the machines are checked out. Oh, okay. Well, either way, everybody, be sure to check out Zeitgeist Live. Thanks again for coming on, Tyson, and um, like I said, keep in touch with us and let us know, you know, if you need any help with anything. Thank you, Neil. Keep up the great work, man. Really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Please visit my website, v-radio.org. Um, there you can find archives of more shows like this one, more news and uh, other issues with the Zeitgeist Movement, the Venus Project. Um, I've also kind of expanded my show to cover the Hang Man Project, which is the movement associated with Chimatic and Esoteric Agenda, Charlie Veach and the Love Police. Um, and if you have uh, another you know, organization, movement, et cetera, that you think you'd like to hear talked about on V Radio, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. All of my contact information can be found in the contact section on my website. And uh, be sure to take a moment to go down to the Facebook group and click like for Troll, a documentary. Thanks again, Tyson, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I will leave you with some parting words from Jock Fresco and, Mo and Roxanne Meadows. This is Roxanne Meadows. And this is Jock Fresco. And you're listening to V Radio.